This is a video on the Core Periphery model, and it's on the APU. So, Europe was at the core of um, a network, and it led to dominance. And explain the questions are explain how Europe excluded other countries from core benefit, and give some examples. And how has the internet and cell phones helped peripheral countries? And give some more examples. Semi-peripheral countries were exploited by core countries. How did that affect peripheral countries? So, Europe was held to technologies from um, periphery countries. That's how it kept um, its advantage, pretty much. So, it had technology, communications, shipping and stuff and the rest of the world was not as quite as advanced and so Europe and then the rest of the world was all around and pretty much they didn't really um they didn't really interact with each other and except and except in the later 1800s and then and it's like 16 17 and 1800s and then Europe was held technology and things um, when they um, and things colonized most of the world um, they didn't show them how so show the people in the rest of the world how to make all the things that they were making and that was how they excluded Spain, Greece, and Mexico, and many other countries that are in the periphery were helped by inventions like the internet and cell phones. It gave them a global market by global communications. So, a while ago, the periphery countries weren't as advanced and things, and they couldn't sell things, really. But now they have a global market. You can ship things better. You can order things online and things, it, things come quicker to places, and so people um, are able to order things that are grown in Spain and Greece, or things, or made in Spain and Greece, and they have a global market. That has helped their, um, the periphery, uh, peripheral countries' economy. So, the core countries exploited semi-peripheral countries, exploited Oh, it's not my pen. So that means they just took advantage of them. Um, so that's the core countries, and then the sem and then just they exported the semi-peripheral countries, and then they semi-peripheral countries exported peripheral countries, and semi-peripheral countries means like you, know, they aren't quite peripheral countries, but they aren't, um, core countries either. And this system kept going and going and was perpetuated even today. Because the countries wanted to stay in charge of things so that they could have the power and they wouldn't be destroyed or taken over or whatever. And so people kept exploiting other countries. But that kept the peripheral countries and the semi-peripheral countries um, from developing very well. So that's, um, and then another thing is, this is a map of what the core periphery model looks like today. And so the United States and Canada and a lot of European countries and Australia and Japan are all core countries. And then semi-peripheral countries are like Mexico, Brazil, Argentina, Iran, um, India, China, South Africa, Indonesia, countries like that. New Zealand's also a core country. So that's what it looks like today. And what a long time ago it looked like pretty much Europe, England, France, pretty much just England, France. Germany, the Netherlands, right in there with their core countries, and then all the rest of the world, and 
where it's pretty much the periphery. Um, but there were like there were some other core things around here. Actually, there were places that could be classified as core countries for them everywhere, but mainly they were all here. So that's about the core periphery model.